Most of the ocean hasn't been explored yet, and many of the things that dwell in the abysmal depths remain a mystery to our civilization. Numerous legends have been founded as a result of the fear of the ocean, giant monsters, underwater civilizations, unknown beings, etc. But there are some that, as you will see today, are based on real facts. The Carcharodon megalodon is a species of prehistoric shark that dominated the seas between 19.8 and 2.6 million years ago in the so-called Cenozoic era. It had a length of almost 65 feet and a denture armed with tusks up to six inches. Without a doubt, a real monstrosity. And the most terrifying of all is that this marine beast is probably still roaming the seas in our era. Are you surprised? Well, we're just getting started because these are real cases of megalodon attacks in our times. The first case dates back to 1918. Naturist David Stead was visiting Port Stephens, a coastal town in Australia. One day, he was walking along the beach when he met a terrified group of crab fishermen. They refused outright to enter the deep waters where they had their crab traps near Broughton Island. When David Stead asked them what they were so afraid of, the fishermen told him an amazing story. They were in their fishing boat picking up the crabs when a totally white shark, immeasurably large, what they calculated to be 115 feet long, jumped into the boat and instantly devoured several crab cages, including ropes, mooring lines, and much of the machinery. Afterwards, a huge shark roamed the barge at an incredible speed and, they said, boiled the water through which it passed. But miraculously, the fishermen managed to turn around and escape. Apparently, the monster had already sated or simply decided that the fishing boat was not worth it. The fishermen fervently claimed that the creature was nothing like a whale. In fact, it did not look like anything they had ever seen before, at least not with respect to its size. In short, it was a giant, terribly large white shark. The second case is more recent. In 2003, the internet headlines were filled with the news that a super predator was hunting in the oceans, a predator that not even a white shark could face with dignity. It is said that a group of marine biologists had caught a large white shark and installed a kind of black box to monitor it. The black box, which functioned as a GPS, was also capable of measuring the shark's body temperature. It was a great surprise to all the scientists when the box recorded that something had attacked the white shark. Sometime later, the black box was found on a beach, and that's when marine biologists were able to analyze all the data. The surprise was even greater than the previous one. Apparently, something had caught the shark and suddenly, at an enormous speed, had dragged it more than 2,000 feet deep. What could have dared mess with a white shark and dragged it so easily to such depth? The theory that the great white went down on its own was quickly discarded since no variety of shark could reach those depths and survive. In addition, the black box yielded another disconcerting fact. The temperature rose considerably to a constant and stable point, indicating that it was inside a stomach along with the remains of the shark. However, it was still too low a temperature, which excluded the first suspect, an orca. However, the temperature was too high for another shark, unless it was much larger than the average. Experts said it was normal for beings suffering from gigantism to have elevated body temperatures compared to common specimens. However, the enigma remained inexplicable. What kind of creature could have taken a great white shark as if it were a toy and dragged it to the depths of the ocean to devour it? The media did not delay in spreading the theory of a megalodon that, despite all that is believed, had managed to survive until our era. However, scientists have not rushed to approve this theory, not until they saw the prehistoric shark with their own eyes. Finally, there is another recorded attack of what could be a megalodon. It happened in 2013, 80 kilometers north of Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Passengers on a small boat saw a giant shark attack and kill a sperm whale. People then watched in terror as the shark grabbed the animal's body and submerged it at a speed impossible for any other marine animal to reach. In order to drag the mass of a school bus sized whale, the beast had to bring its tail to the surface and then propel itself down. 
The local people in the boat, many of them fishermen, said that they had never seen a fin of this size in all their sailing days. In fact, one claimed that the fin alone was twice the size of his fishing boat. A few hours after the massacre, it was confirmed that near the coast, the sperm whale's corpse had appeared, or what was left of it. Clearly, it had been attacked by a very violent and terrifyingly strong creature. Robert Culper, a recognized marine biologist, was in charge of inspecting the remains of the whale. His first impression was that the entire lower third of the body had been cut from a single bite, as if it were a guillotine. Later, looking closely at the remains, he could find embedded in the sperm whale's spine a tusk more than seven inches long, a large measure even compared to the fossils of megalodons found. Based on this, Robert Culper ventured to estimate the size of the shark, which terrifyingly and disturbingly exceeded 90 feet in length. And he concluded that the radius of its bite reached six feet. With these measures in mind, it is practically impossible not to think of the legendary megalodon, Another thing that inclined Robert Culper to think about the prehistoric creature was the way it had attacked the whale. Modern sharks always tried to go for the soft parts to, if not kill their prey, at least take a good slice of meat. On the other hand, the megalodon was famous for attacking just the parts full of bone in order to immobilize the victim and enjoy the feast properly. Evidence of this are the fossils of prehistoric whales whose vertebral columns have commonly been marked with megalodon tusks just like the Vancouver whale. To this day, there have been no new records of this shark, but the violent sighting impacted the population since they no longer see the deep sea in the same way. To this day, there is no one who has been able to give an affirmative answer to the theory of the megalodons that hunt in our seas. Despite this, scientists have not been able to discard them completely either. Who knows what effects it would have for humanity to realize that there are still living prehistoric beings on the planet, and that the true king of the oceans is one of them. Do you believe that these mysterious attacks are really due to the mythical megalodon? Or on the contrary, do they have a less impressive and more feasible explanation? And if they really are megalodons, how many are down there? Dozens? Hundreds? Thousands?